Hello everyone, so we'll be looking at the management of renal stones according to NICE guidelines. These are my resources. So renal stones are uh, most common sites. There are three most common sites. One is the pelvic ureteric junction, one is in the mid ureter, and the last one is in the ureterovesicular junction. Um, so usually people with renal stones, they present with excruciating loin to groin or flank to groin pain. Um, the pain uh, is described as sometimes comparable to um, childbirth pain or uh, heart attack pain. So it is really severe pain uh, that causes uh, nausea, sweating and all that. And um, so you definitely want to give pain relief. Uh, and the first line pain relief is actually NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Um, this is because it has been proven to be most effective, uh, hence it's the first line. Uh, it can be given in any route, uh, normally it is an oral route if they can tolerate orally. However, if NSAIDs are contraindicated, for example, they have a renal impairment or they have asthma, um, then you give IV paracetamol instead. If both NSAIDs and IV paracetamol are contraindicated or not effective, then we can consider opioid analgesics such as tramadol. And a nice quality standard says that we should do imaging uh, within 24 hours. So the imaging of choice is the low dose non contrast CT scan. Um, within 24 hours. This is to confirm the diagnosis and also to measure the size of the stone because later on your management will um, take into consideration the size of the stone as well. Um, however, in pregnant women, we want to avoid radiation so we do an ultrasound, ultrasound instead. Uh, and also in children, in young adults, uh, less than 16 years old, then you will prefer an ultrasound if the diagnosis is uncertain, then only we do a low dose non contrast CT scan of the kidney, ureter, bladder. Um, treatment there are three routes that we can take. Uh, depending on the patient's presentation and also the size of the stone after we did the scan. So, um, if the stone is less than 5 millimeters and the patient is asymptomatic, then we will do a watchful waiting because the rationale is that most stones, most small stones will pass. Um, the rate of um, the stone uh, spontaneously um, being passed out uh, depends on the size of the stone. So the smaller the stone, the easier it is passed out spontaneously. The larger the stone, the less likely it is to pass out spontaneously. Here are some statistics. 95% um, of urethral stones up to 4 millimeters pass within 40 days. So uh, almost all of the stones smaller than 4 millimeters and smaller will pass on its own. 75% uh, of stones less than uh, 5 millimeters and 62% of stones 5 millimeters or more are passed spontaneously. And the average time to stone expulsion was about 17 days. So you have to uh, wait, uh, you have to tell the patient uh, how long um, they should expect for the stone to pass out. Usually, uh, average is 17 days. Right. So uh, if less than 5 mm asymptomatic, watchful waiting. If more than 5 mm, um, you can also do watchful waiting, but you have to discuss with the patient. Uh, you say that. Um, this you think this stone will pass spontaneously, uh, so it has to be a what a shared decision between you and the patient. So if the patient agrees to do watchful waiting, uh, don't want to do any treatment, then uh, we'll go on with uh, proceed with watchful waiting as well. The other two options are um, medical expulsive therapy and surgical treatment. So medical expulsive therapy is used for distal stones, less than 10 millimeters. So proximal stones are in a pelvic ureteric junction, right? So distal stones is, are the ones in the mid ureter or in the 
uh, near the bladder there. So medical exposit therapy, we'll talk about that, that later. Or surgical treatment, uh, if the patient is presenting with like what I said uh, near the first slide, um, they present with very excruciating pain, like the pain of giving birth and pain of a heart attack and all that. And it's unrelenting and then unbearable for the patient. Then you want to um, do your surgery as fast as possible. Reading for the eight hours is the quality statement. Or if the stone is unlikely to pass, also you go for surgical treatment. So very big stones. So watchful waiting is basically you just watch and wait lah because uh, the stone will come out on its own. Um, medical explosive therapy, you're gonna give something known as alpha blockers. So first we need to know what is this alpha, right? So um, on your all your blood vessels or your um, tracts, you have uh, alpha receptors, and these alpha receptors, um, when they are stimulated it causes a contraction of the smooth muscles resulting in constriction of these um, these tracts so this ureter uh, has alpha blockers and has, has alpha receptors and then if, if you use alpha blockers you block the action of alpha adrenergic uh, hormones on the alpha receptors you will block this contraction. So what's the opposite of contraction is dilatation, relaxation and dilatation of these tracks. So um, what these alpha blockers do is they dilate, dilate these tracks. So the, the lumen becomes uh, slightly more lax and bigger and then the stone is more likely uh, can, can be passed out faster and research has shown that it is effective um, in reducing the time, uh, making the stone come out faster than if you don't do anything. So this is only used for stones uh, less than 10 millimeters and distal stones. So the reason for distal stones is because the con concentration of alpha receptors is higher in your distal ureter. So it's, alpha blockers are more effective to remove distal stones. Yeah, so example of alpha blocker is Tamsulosin, 400 micrograms once daily. And uh, there are three types of surgical therapy. So we'll talk about them one by one. The first one is the shockwave lithotripsy, SWL. Uh, so you use, uh, it's a non-invasive outpatient treatment that focuses shock waves on the stone to break it up. So you see shock waves targeted at the stone. To break it up then uh, as the stone breaks up into particles the particles are passed out spontaneously so as you urinate it comes out yep so the other surgical therapies um, this is ureteroscopy so you put a ureteroscope up the urethra into the bladder up the ureter and then it depends on the size of the stone if the stone is small um, you can take the stone out as a whole. However, if the stone is big, then there are various um, ways to break up the stones, various energy sources such as lasers to break up the stone, and then they retrieve it from there. And then the last surgical therapy is quite traumatic. It's a percutaneous nephrolithotomy. So it, you poke through the skin here to reach the kidney from the back. So you know your kidneys are at the back. So you locate your kidneys, you poke through the skin. So it's percutaneous. And um, you take out the stones from here, the pelvis of the kidney. So it's a procedure in which a nephroscope is passed percutaneously into the collecting system and the stone is fragmented and extracted through the nephroscope. So you can see in the picture here. So when we do each of this, uh, this is a table from NICE guidelines. Oh, so usually you'll, we will prefer SWL and URS, urethroscopy and uh, short wave lithotripsy, lithotripsy. So, uh, if you can see here, uh, this is for we we'll talk about adults because in children it's usually a specialized field. So I'm I have no right to comment about it. Uh, uh, treatment for adults. 
uh, so if the stone is less than 10 millimeters um, SWL is preferred so offer SWL and consider URS if stone clearance is not possible within four weeks with SWL or there are contrary indications for SWL or the stone is not targetable with SWL or a previous course of SWL has failed. So if SWL doesn't work, then URS. Shortwave lithotripsy first, lithotripsy, then if it doesn't work, then uretroscopy. If the uretric stone is more than 10 millimeters, so 10 to 20 millimeters, let's say here because they don't have much data for stones bigger than 20 millimeters. So the recommendation is offer ureteroscopy. Uh, and then consider SWL if local facilities allow stone clearance within four weeks. And then consider PCNL with percutaneous nephrolithotomy for impacted proximal stones when URS has failed. So if this fail, you can consider this or you can consider this if facilities allow. Right. And so you remove the stone. What you need to do is to prevent recurrence because um, the one of the risk factors for having renal stones is you had renal stones previously. And probably because uh, of lifestyle choices or certain metabolic abnormalities. So, so how do we prevent recurrence? The most basic one is to tell them to drink lots of water. So the recommended amount is 2.5 to 3 liters of water. Um, the rationale is that you drink more water, you dilute your urine, less likely the electrolytes will precipitate or crystallize. And also uh, it's like the increased flow to flush out everything, right? Um, another advice you can give is actually proven uh, is add lemon juice in your water because uh, lemon juice contains citric acid and the citrate uh, in this uh, lemon juice will actually bind to your calcium uh, so prevents it from precipitating you so binds to your calcium oxalate stones and prevent them from getting bigger so lemon juice in your water, avoid carbonated drinks, I'm not sure why, um, reduce salt intake uh, to less than 6 grams a day, um, maintain normal calcium intake. So uh, a common misconception is that, um, yes it is true that about 70% to 80%, 60 to 80%, about 70% of renal stones um, uh, they are composed of calcium, uh, either calcium phosphate or calcium oxalate. Calcium oxalate is the most common. Um, so a lot of misconception is that because uh, the most common stone is calcium stones, then you want to reduce calcium intake. But no, actually reducing calcium intake uh, will exacerbate the, um, will increase your risk of calcium renal stones. Um, this is because when you have very little calcium in your gut, your gut goes and absor increase the absorption of oxalate. And this oxalate uh, will increase the chance of having ca calcium oxalate stones. So don't reduce your calcium intake, uh, just maintain the normal calcium intake. And also lose weight because uh, the obesity is one of the risk factors for calcium stones. And also you want to investigate the cause of the stone. So how you investigate? You do metabolic investigations, which includes serum calcium and stone analysis. So some people uh, will urinate their, out their, their, they'll bring their stone after they urinate their stone out. And then you can send it to the lab to analyze the content of the stone, what it's composed of. Um, so for... Serum calcium, right? Nice suggests us, uh, like recommends. One of the quality statements is that we should do serum calcium in everyone presenting stones, because um, oftentimes this is not a very high cost investigation, and oftentimes the stone is due to primary hyperparathyroidism, which can be uh, detected by uh, high serum calcium. 
and dietary advice for recurrent stone disease I got from the BNF. So, if uh, after you did the investigation of the cause of the stone, you did the stone analysis, if it's a calcium stone, how you can prevent further stones is to reduce your oxalate intake. So things that contain high oxalate include these things. Rhubarb, spinach, coca, tea, nuts, soy products, strawberries, and wheat bran. Um, and then um, if uh, the stones uh, are uric acid stones, uh, uric acid also causes a high, high, um, high uric acid also causes gout, um, you reduce the urate intake in your food. So foods that contain high urate are liver, kidney, calf timers, poultry skin, certain fish like herring with skin, sardines, anchovies. Yep. So these are the dietary advices you can give based on the type of stone and medical treatment for recurrent stones. So um, if uh, you already tested the composition of the stone uh, and the stone is mostly made of calcium what you can do is you can give these medical treatments for this uh, known stone composition. So tyrosine diuretics uh, with low salt diet. So low salt diet, when you have low salt in your uh, body, um, this uh, tyrosine diuretics works better in preventing these stones. Um, the mechanism of action is that tyrosine actually reabsorbs calcium in your kidneys so uh, you pee out less calcium, more calcium in your blood but you pee out less calcium uh, so there's less calcium in your urine so less chance of um, these calcium stones on, from getting bigger and also potassium citrate also we mentioned before citrate the citrate in this uh, binds to calcium prevents precipitation also binds to calcium oxalate prevents the stones from getting bigger and also potassium, potassium C3 also works for urea axis stones as well because um, it's a urine alkalinizer um, so it increases the pH of your urine and it uh, helps the urea acid stones to dissolve as well yeah I think that's the end of my presentation hope it helps thank you for watching you. Mm.